Afternoon, Graham. Afternoon. Any Nichols injuries in the squad compared with last weekend? No, um, no. Uh, should be as we were last weekend. Um, Purvis Estupian, is he a player that you've had your eye on for a while? What kind of player is he? Attacking fullback. Yeah, we've been aware of him. The club's been aware of him, and I've um, I know of him. Um, so someone we followed for a while. He has a. Uh, you know, some attributes that we think are really useful for us and looking forward to working with him. He's obviously just arrived, so he has to settle in and all that stuff that you'd expect. But um, first impressions have been really positive, so really looking forward to working with him. Will he be involved this weekend? Uh, yeah, he'll be in the squad. Yeah, OK. Um, you've spoken in the past about South American players and giving them time to settle in, uh, culture changes and all that kind of stuff. He's obviously been in England before with Watford, but most of the time he was on loan. We're, Will he need time to settle as well? We'll see. It's it's uh, it's a case by case. They're human beings, so you have to just judge it like that, and <clears throat> depending on the need of the team. But um, you know, he's still coming, uh, learning his new teammates, different style of play, different country, different league. But um, he has the attributes. I think that can deal with the Premier League, no problem. So um, we'll just have to see how he goes. But like I said, we're looking forward to it. His Ecuador teammate Moises Casado, a lot of uh, getting a lot of attention. Um, there's speculation, which doesn't seem to be rooted in in anything at all, really. But what kind of character is he? He's very young and in a new country. Um, does he? Is it quite easy to sort of steer him away from that kind of stuff, to, so he can ignore everything like that? And just how good can he be? Uh, he's, as I've said before, if you sort of my quotes on him, he's a really humble person. <laughs> Loves playing football. Um, I would say really low maintenance as a as a player. It's just comes wants to join wants to join in his football with his teammates. Um, he's really enjoying his football as you can imagine. So um, he's only young, but he's got a, such a, a high possibility. I think we we love him here. Um, as for speculation, it is what it is. When the transfer window's open, you always get that stuff. But he's really enjoying his football here, and we're really enjoying having him. His rise has been so quick, hasn't it? Do you think almost it takes him by surprise? Well, yes and no. I mean, I think um, he's been with us for a while, so we've been aware of him. And I think even before he got in the team, we, we were saying like we, we rate him a lot and we believe in him a lot. It's just trying to find that right time to put him in. And you look back now and you think, well, maybe they should have put him in a, little bit, a bit sooner. Um, <clears throat> that's always the consideration. But um, he's always impressed. He's always aware of his quality. And as, as a person, just like I said, very humble, uh, just wanting to play football. Just um, so as a coach, it's, he's a delight to work with. So it's um, happy for him that he's enjoying his football and he hasn't played that many games, but um, he hasn't lost that many in the Premier League either. So he thinks it's um, maybe he thinks it's a little bit different than it actually is, but long may that continue, of course. Um, Neil Mope, is there any update on him? And, and, and while there is speculation around what's going on, will he be involved in the squad? No update. Um, so yeah, things happened on the day before the game a little bit. So we, we, we took the decision not to to, to involve him, but um, he's trained all week with us. So um, yeah, I'll be in the squad. Yeah. Finally, for me, just on West Ham, you've got an extraordinary record against that club since since winning promotion to the Premier League. Why is that? Is it is it down to start of play and things just matching up really well? Is it a bit of luck or is it a combination of lots of things? Yeah, I have no idea. I didn't realise it was that um, that strong. Whenever we I think in my time we <coughs> we've only won one one against West Ham I think the last game in my time unless I'm mistaken so that doesn't feel like such a great record um, draws. draws exactly yeah I don't think we've we've lost so many but we've drawn a lot so um, oh, I've got a huge respect and admiration for David Moyes for the first thing in the job that he's done there uh, and as a man I, I have a lot of time for him I like him a lot mm, real football person. Um, so whenever you play his teams, you know they're competitive. You see what they've achieved, what he's achieved. Um, so they've had a tough start in terms of playing Manchester City, which is never easy. And then first game at the City ground, all of a sudden there's two defeats and things can look a bit worse than they actually are. But um, experienced squad, experienced player, players, um, experienced manager. So we're we're ready for a tough game. Thank you. Hi Graham. Um, just on. Uh, West Ham. Steve, last season they managed to get themselves into Europe. They've got European football th this season. We talk about leagues within a league. 
Um, a Brighton now in that same league as West Ham, are they a direct rival now? Are you competing for the same things as West Ham? Um, well, I, th I think what you have is, um, apart from six teams, seven teams maybe, everyone has to feel that they're holding two positions, which is make sure you get enough points to stay in the league and then, and then you have ambition. So if that's, um, that's where we are. I can't really comment on where West Ham are in terms of where they see themselves, but that's where we see, see ourselves and we see a lot of teams in that same bracket. West Ham have done really, really well for the last couple of years since David's got in there. You know, they've invested quite a lot in terms of their squad um, over the years and it's only since David's got there that they've really had some success, I would say. So, um, you know, from our perspective, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of teams that are in the same boat as us, which is make sure you get the points, fight every day, every game for the points in the Premier League because they're really tough. You mentioned there, you know, the, a top six, but we've seen results at the start of this season yourselves beating Manchester United, Liverpool with a couple of draws against Fulham and Crystal Palace. Is it levelling up? Do you think that gap is closing across the board, and that more teams such as Brighton, such as Wolves, West Ham, and, and so on, can now put in? a bigger challenge perhaps to some of those established top six teams? I still think the gap is huge when you talk about resources. Um, probably getting bigger, is it, is it not? I don't, I don't know for sure, but from a resource perspective, I think it's still there. Um, again, and everybody's so different. I mean, you know, to compare, you know, us with, with West Ham or with Aston Villa, it doesn't make sense because there's different things that they have and we don't have and vice versa. So. You can get yourself tied in knots, really, just comparing with other teams and thinking about whether you're like them in some some way as a as a group of people that are in the top six. It's just we are we are us. We we do our best. We try and um, use what we have. Uh, don't say that we're any better or any worse than anybody else because of our idea, but we just try to 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 improve. It's the, probably the easiest way to look at it from our perspective. It was touched on before that this record that um, Brighton has against West West Ham. Is that something, you said you weren't necessarily aware of it, but is that something that can come into play um, at any stage, psychologically or, or so? You know, you've got late goals against them before and so on, that if, from the opposition point of view, they're thinking this is a team that we can't seem to get a result against. I think that everybody talks about, um, you know, it's a new season, a new team, they'll have made changes to their squads, um, it, nothing really counts for for what you did six months ago or two years ago or whatever time it is. It's be in the moment, focus on um, <clears throat> focus on what you have to do to win the game. Um, if there's some positive from our perspective that we've had a good record, then okay. But I, don't, I can't see it too much to be honest. On the flip side, if you've never if you've never won a game, then you want, you can't go to Old Trafford and win. Anything's possible, so uh, we've we've proven that on the flip side. So we just have to focus on the game and not worry about too much what's happened previously. Just finally, from me, it was talked about um, Neil Mopé before. Um, if something was to happen with him, are you already on the lookout for potential replacements? And if so, would it be a, a like for like, or would you be looking at bringing in someone who perhaps has different characteristics? Not necessarily, because it's, there's a lot to happen. Um, you know, as I understand, I don't think Neil's desperate to to, to leave. Um, we're certainly not kicking him out the door. From a personal perspective, as I could probably count on the one hand how many players have helped me become a better coach, the same as Neil. So, um, you know, what he's done for us over the last three years is is clear. Um, I don't think you can replace um, like for like because the attributes are, are unique. You've got to always look for something else that can help the squad. But uh, we'll do that anyway, regardless of any situation. We're always looking to see if there's something we can add to the group that will help the group, that make us better. But at the same time, we're really happy with what we have. Graham, with Purvis's arrival, you're building up quite a South American contingent here, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to learn Spanish, yeah, I need to. <laughs> Saying that, actually, we, people like Alexis who've built up a time here now, it must help you knowing that when these people arrive, they've got people mm. there who are going to welcome in. Jeremy, Julio's arrived as well. That must help you know that they might integrate better. 
yeah, there's a there's a positive side to that, which is there's the people you mentioned that are there that can help each other to feel like they can at least speak Spanish, they can talk amongst them, you know, uh, refer back to the the homeland or you know speaking the same. Uh, yeah, in the same language, but at the same time, what you have to watch is it doesn't go into a little, as a South American click, and you know, uh, and that's the balance, and, and it's not that way at all. But I think that's the all the guys are conscious of that, and we're conscious of that. So it's an, it's at the moment it's a nice balance. Um, you have to respect the fact that there's there's people from the same sort of area, and that, and that's nice. And then our guys can also benefit from that as well because they can understand a bit more about South American culture. In terms of Alexis, slightly different role for him this season so far? Yeah. Um, I mean, he's played there a few times uh, last season, but obviously with Eves leaving, um, we looked at that. I, mean, I think in the second half against West Ham, he played as the deeper lying player, did it, did it really well. He's got the attributes to play there, but he's very intelligent, um, can win the ball, plays forward, um, good understanding of the game. So he's done really well there, we're really pleased. For players like him and some of the other players that have got potential of a World Cup, mm. have you had discussions with them about that and how it's going to work yet? Or is it just, let's just concentrate on the Premier League and not... Because obviously it's a massive season for, for a lot of them from, from that respect as well. Yeah, I think that, that it's only my opinion, but I think the huge mistake they would make would be to, to think too far ahead in terms of the World, you know, World Cup Premier League matches is what's going to get you there. So focus on the now, be in the moment. It's a massive thing and there's no denying it. There's a World Cup and of course it, it influences people or affects people. But um, for, our, for our boys, they're very um, focused, they're very uh, intelligent in terms of knowing, OK, how, how's the best way that I can get there in a good way? It's by really focusing on the now and, and helping us win football matches and performing well as a, as a, as a team. Focus now is West Ham. Obviously, they've traditionally sort of been quite, I suppose, they similar squad, similar team, but they've got a few new faces uh, playing last night for their first win in Europe. Mm. What do you make of those new arrivals and maybe some different options for David at West Ham? Yeah, they've added well, I think. A um, couple of injuries that have, that have stopped them with the centre back, but they've added another one there. So it looks like they're building a squad that you know can compete and stay at the, where they want to be in the Premier League, but also compete in Europe. It's not easy to do. Um, obviously, last year's semi-finals of the, of the European competition, plus a top seven finish, was it in the end? So um, they have to add the squad, and they've done it, I think, quite well. Um, forward looks like a different type of forward for them. Uh, Skamaka and uh, Corne, we know well anyway. So uh, some good additions.